Stephen, in many ways, this documentary, you seem to have found three people who, in a sense, also make up who you are. Um, I, there's, I guess there's little bits that I've experienced in each of the people. Um, with David, he lost both of his parents. Um, I lost my father. Um, with Lewis, he's straddling two worlds, which is something that I can definitely relate to. Uh, with Denzel being a bit of a wheeler dealer, I've definitely done a bit of dealing <laughs> in my time. Um, yeah, I suppose. I yeah, I hadn't thought about it. And there you are in primary school. Yes. Little you there. Yeah. Age six. I look almost, because I'm sat slightly in front of, that was my best friend, Zephyr. I'm sat slightly in front. I look almost superimposed, mm. didn't I? My head looks too big for my shoulders. <laughs> but 25 years later, you have drawn many conclusions about white working class educational experience. And well, I'm wondering whether yeah. you could spot any of it in your own primary school. Um, do you know what? I actually had the opposite. I, I was, my situation was more similar to Lewis. And actually, it was, it was less white working class and more working class. As you can see, I was, mm -hmm. you know, but in my, that was the second of three primary schools that I went to. And it was in the third primary school that a teacher, Mr. Friend, suggested that I sit the entry exam for St. Paul's. I was a really bright kid. Um, and but even at that age, and looking back now, it's only, you know, doing this documentary that's made me think about it. Uh, meeting Lewis and understanding his situation, you know, being presented with an opportunity to go to Cambridge, despite being from a working class background and going to a state school. Um, I look back on it and I was like, wow, even at 11, I knew my place in the world or thought I did, because when that was presented to me, I just went, I don't, I don't want to go there. If it's we go through the, the first three people that you look at, mm. um, David loses his parents when he's 15, 16. 16, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, clearly that had a terrible effect upon him. Yeah. Left him very isolated. He was completely adrift. It turns out that his, you know, it went beyond him being dyslexic and he was actually illiterate. Mm. Um, he found himself homeless, you know, completely adrift and bumped into someone who took him under his wing, mm. who, you know, people then, can make their minds up about. Denzel, and I, 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 I recognise you might be watching this, so to call him a wide boy would be rude. I don't really mean it like that, but... He was a bit of a wide boy. He's got ideas. He's yes. got ideas. He's got plans. Um, <laughs> but they never come to fruition. Well, no, they, they, that's the problem, isn't it? And it's, it's that, it's, oh, it's being stuck in that situation where you've got all these dreams. It's good to have dreams and aspirations, mm. don't get me wrong. Mm. But what's an idea without execution? Mm. That's, that's a problem. And then you have Lewis, who, who is an absolute breed apart. I mean, a man who was born with maths pouring out of his head. That's, you know, that was his golden ticket. And that, you know, it's a shame that actually social mobility seems to, from my understanding of it, rely on that golden ticket. For me, it was rap. For some people, it's football. Um, for Lewis, it was his incredible mathematical ability. Um, but, you know, how many people are there like Lewis who, who could be where Lewis is, but we don't tap into because of low expectations, which I don't think are, you know, the, listen, the programme is on white working class men. Reason being, it was born of a single statistic, which is that only 10% mm. of white working class men will go to university, but they're the most likely to end up in jail or an addict. That puts them the least mm. likely to attend university. That was, was what it was born of. Post-Brexit, they, they make up 70% of the vote. I mean, you have Lewis, who comes from the South. Yep. You have... Uh... Denzel, who comes from the East End, if you like. Yeah, and then David, and David from, from all the way up in Bolton. Yeah. yeah. Now, the South did very well. Is it a regional thing, do you think? Um, I, don't, I don't think it's a regional thing. You know, Lewis went to a relatively average school. You know, he was state-schooled. But in every northern encounter, Bolton, mm. they all talk about the deprivation of the town. Yeah, I think that comes from, and you know, I'm not of an age where I can discuss this in any detail because I wasn't around when Bolton was a mill town. But, you know, when, when industry collapsed, people didn't stop having children, mm. you know? But all of a sudden there's no industry. I think there was a time, you know, when people talk, you know, when Steve talks about, Steve's not my favorite person, mm. as becomes clear in the documentary. Um, but when he talks about, you know, the collapse of industry, mm. and you can imagine the effect on, on people then. What happens then? Well, you, you have welfare, which people needed, otherwise they mm. would have starved. But then you have people growing up, seeing parents on welfare, seeing them not working. What does that do to, mm. to self-worth and ambition and aspiration? Um, 
I think it's really sad because people in these towns that I went to, to, to discuss that specifically, have very little aspiration. There's a real acceptance of where they can get to. At Lewis's school, I spoke to a 14, 15 year old kid mm. and it didn't make the cut. Um, but I asked him about it and it, 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 and it still upsets me. If my child said what he said to me when I asked him what he wanted to be, I'd have, I'd have failed as a father. Um, I asked him what he wanted to be when he left school. And he said, well, I, I wanted to be a doctor. I said, wanted? And he went, well, yeah, that's, it's, I can't do that. I've got to leave school and get a job because mm. I've got to make money. He's got to support himself. Mm. And I think that's true of a lot of working class families. I mm. think there's, you know, a sense of you've got to support yourself. Even me in my situation now, I still have working class anxieties because I don't have enough money for my future, let alone my child's. I'm just in this weird place between two worlds where I come from very humble beginnings and I've made good, but I don't have a safety net. I don't have parents that I can fall back on. I don't have members of my family that can help me out if I've, you know what I mean? Mm. If all goes wrong, I make a couple of bad decisions and all of a sudden my life takes a very different course. But you've majored on education. But in the case of David, for example, whose parents both die of natural causes when he's 16. Yeah. Um, Two weeks it's actually apart. very clear that the welfare system failed, that no care was offered, yep. that it seems that nobody knew his parents had died and he was alone in the world. Well, he was, when I found him, he was living in a hostel where no one even helped him with the letters that he received. So he missed out on two housing placements simply because no one helped him with, you know, no one gave him the help that he needed. Mm. And that's in a hostel. He Surely couldn't read or write. He couldn't read or write. Yeah. What about you? Because I sense looking at the documentary, mm. that you are yourself on a journey. And I almost wonder whether the rapper has now become a documentary maker and essentially a campaigner and possibly may end up in politics. I don't know, man. Growing up, I never wanted to be a part of politics. I didn't, I, did, I couldn't understand what they were saying. I think, you know, economists and politicians are both very similar in that they speak in a way that most people just can't understand. But your life experience has given you something most of them don't have. Yeah, and I, I think it's a shame that we don't see more people like that in Parliament, because if you had people who actually understood the effect of the decisions they were making, making the, deci the decisions, mm. then surely they'd make better decisions by people. What, what would you, if, if you were in Parliament, what would yeah. you demand had to be done? Jesus, I, oh, <laughs> that's such a huge question. Um, I think I'd start... I think, you know, you brought up welfare. I think welfare is a pretty good place to start. I think we need to speculate. We know what the cost of someone ending mm. up in prison is. So why don't we do what, you know, we know what goes hand, we know poverty, you know, poverty and social deprivation. We know what goes hand in hand with that, you know, mental health mm. issues, crime, it's exclusion, isn't it? So why don't we start to repair that? Why, mm. don't, why don't we put time and effort and money into, you know, why don't we put spending into the areas that need it? Do you think you've done with rapping or will rapping perhaps help spread the word? Um, rapping is social commentary, you know, and I suppose the documentaries are as well. The subject of, of white working class Britain isn't me putting on a cape and being like a superhero for the white working class. It's simply me having a look into a, a specific group of people. Um, well, rapping's given you access, hasn't it? But rapping, I, yeah, rapping has been... They rapping, know you, they like you, they trust you. Yeah, well, but they trust you, me... And, until you meet Britain first. <laughs> until I meet Britain first, and then... But I couldn't walk... I didn't... I, was, I threw my toys out of the pram when mm. I was asked to go on... Not on that march, but to that march, because I didn't want anything to do with them. I didn't want to give them mm. a platform. But how could we explore the white working class if we didn't explore that avenue? Mm. It wouldn't be honest because that was taking place. Mm. And it had something to do with one of the people, you know, one of the contributors. It's easy to laugh at them, it's easy to, to ridicule them, it's easy to ignore them, but is that a sensible thing to do when people mm. are being leveraged, they're having their anger and their unrest leveraged by people who are giving them mm. someone to blame, when actually all that's doing is distracting them from looking at the, the old elites, the ones who really hold mm. the power, who are actually to blame for their situation. And do you know what I find funny about it? The funniest thing about it is them walking around waving the British flag when really their country has done very, very little for them. Mm. Professor Green, and I think I can call you Professor Green because this is a <laughs> professorial journey. It is, it's a professorial analysis. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. in.